I want to talk to you today about traditional solo dancing or step dancing. I suppose in Irish you will call it rinke and shanos. Rinke, of course, isn't really foot footing or foot dancing. And I suppose of all the forms of foot dancing, Irish dancing was the most advanced. Compared to the very simple forms of clog dancing as they would do in the Lake District in England, in Lancashire, European clog dancing and so forth, you know, they're nowhere near the uh, advanced state that you would find Irish traditional dancing. And I suppose its peak probably came around the middle of the 18th um, century. And from that on it began to wane perhaps a little with the sort of fall off of the number of dancing masters involved and so forth. So when I talk about traditional dancing, what exactly do I mean? I mean that form of dancing that was done, say, prior to 1930 or thereabouts. So you go back 40, 50, 60 years in that area. And there were two distinctive characteristics about traditional dancing at that time. One is that it was synchronized absolutely with the music. The music and dance synchronized absolutely dead on. Whereas today, <coughs> modern Irish dancing, much of it is syncopated. That's to say some of it is slightly off the beat. <coughs> and the other characteristic was that it was done, as they said, close to the floor, within the economy of space. They used to say that if you were a really good dancer, you could dance on a plate. And if you were a top class dancer, you could dance on eggshells, that, that sort of thing. But it did mean that you did it in the smallest possible space and that you synchronized absolutely with the music. Now, it might appear at the beginning that the thing was a bit complicated when you look at some of the, uh, the steps. So, perhaps before I go any further, let me do just one step so that you get, you listen to it because Irish dancing was both oral and visual. You wanted to see it and you wanted to hear it at the same time. So, listen and See what you think of it. Now, this is a hornpipe step, probably one of the more advanced ones, but at the same time, if you know a hornpipe tune, hum along with it, and you'll find that it'll synchronize exactly with the, uh, the music. Now, this is the sort of sound that would accompany the music. If you you can name any number of hornpipes that would fit that exactly. So that's what I mean by synchronized. It was absolutely synchronized. And done at a speed of roughly, say, about 40 bars per minute. So you would set your metronome to 80 and your head spot on. Nowadays, that particular dance would be done at perhaps 26, 28 bars. So the thing has been slowed down simply because they have put, modern dancing has put so much into the dance that they had to lengthen the time of the, the music. So they only slow down the music and lengthen the time to get it in. But however, to revert back a little bit. The uh, hornpipe such that I've danced now probably goes back maybe oh, 200 years. Again, to that same period, about 1750, when dancing was at its... Uh, that's the peak.